This video is inspired by a more or less recent piece of news that an invisible sculpture was sold by artist Salvatore Garau for about 18 and a half thousand US dollars. It's true that in my previous videos I've been showing a bit more of my creative process and me painting, me making art, but in this one I wanted to talk to you about this beautiful thing that we have that is the art world. We'll also be discussing my newest art piece, which is right here. I've made this invisible painting inspired by Salvatore Garau and just like his work, it's made out of nothing, nothing. In this video we'll be discussing art and a new concept by a Spanish YouTuber actually that I really like, Antonio Garcia Villarán, Hola, who soy Antonio Garcia Villarán. basically coined a term called amparte, which means, in his words, the art of not having talent. In his opinion, there's a lot of artists that fall into this category, but I do think that it can be a useful term for some of what we're seeing in the contemporary art world. created this invisible sculpture that is basically made out of nothing and it's not the first one that he created actually but it's the first one that he sold. He did share this video on Instagram. He actually placed a sculpture that doesn't exist in Milan and said you do not see it but it exists. It is made out of air and spirits. Salvatore Garau is an Italian artist, as actually many other artists who have kind of been popularized by these unconventional pieces. Just at the top of my head there's Piero Manzoni, who has been made famous by his selling of an art piece called Merda d'Artista. It's basically translated to the shit of an artist and the work consisted on him filling 90 different little cans with 30 grams of his poop in each and selling it to various collectors. Obviously more recently we have Maurizio Catalan who famously tied a banana to a wall with some duct tape and sold it for over 100,000 US dollars twice. So basically, Italian art has gone from this to this, and now this, nothing. <laughs> to be honest, I find these pieces of conceptual art quite amusing, so they have that to their benefit. Some people get quite offended by these uh, artists' work, and especially the fact that they sell which, to be honest, is not very surprising. I mean, these are works that do gather quite a lot of attention. And as we've heard from a million business gurus like Grant Cardone, Money follows attention. Period. End of story. There are a few things that I've heard people say recently that kind of make me a bit uneasy and I felt I should address. Oh, you know, great artists, they're often misunderstood and ahead of their time, really. And, you know, maybe this is just another iteration of the evolution of art. But really, art pieces that are basically made out of nothing, that are nothing. Is this what art is evolving to? But another idea that I see thrown out quite a lot is this idea that these kind of works, you know, Catalan, Manzoni and now Garau are basically critics of the art world and, and specifically the art market. So there are ways of, you know, asking and posing that question, is this really what art is about? Is anything valuable as a piece of art? So there's this idea that these modern conceptual artworks that we see thrown out there, and they are quite provocative. In the end, what they're doing is a valuable critique of the art market actually but the problem with that is we've seen it all before I mean it's not 
anything new. And we see that similar periods and similar art kind of movements have a lot of artworks that are very similar in many ways. And that has been great for the evolution of art and for our own uh, cultural heritage. We don't have one painting of a uh, portrait of a man, we don't have one painting of the female body or one painting of flower arrangements. We have billions. Each of them adds something. And that's our shared cultural artistic heritage. So why is it not fair for us to have a million, a billion pieces of conceptual artwork with the same concept? But I'll tell you, if your art is purely conceptual, then at least give us a new idea. This is already old. I mean, it's been a hundred years. It's been more than a hundred years since Duchamp has turned his urinal into a work of art. And in my opinion, Garau's work can't even be considered a critique of the art market because he's exploiting it. The sale is what made the work famous. And okay, okay, we already knew that anything can be turned into art, a urinal, a piece of poop, a banana, but maybe the idea that nothing can be turned into art is something new. Because it's not just an artist who took something and made it into art, no, it's an artist who actually took nothing and said, this is my artwork. And the problem I have with that is, <laughs> it's not new. And honestly, how many invisible and immaterial sculptures and paintings and art pieces have to be made? Made? In order for us to finally get bored and move on to more fruitful pursuits. <laughs> honestly, if you think that my beautiful invisible painting right here is any source of an innovation, <laughs> think again. Let's talk about the history of invisible art. Immaterial art has quite a long history actually. It might have started with Yves Klein, but this is uncertain. He did this invisible art exhibition in the 50s, which was basically an empty gallery space. And Yves Klein's idea was that you didn't really need much to appreciate whatever he did as artwork. Simply the aura of the artist being in an empty space would be enough to satisfy any spectators. And he was right, because after taking an empty gallery and painting everything white and then standing there, he actually got quite a lot of attention. And apparently there were like 3,000 people turning up to his exhibition in the first days. And it was absolutely fantastic. I would consider that a success. That's probably the first very well-known piece of immaterial art. And don't forget Tom Friedman. Tom Friedman basically got a base for a sculpture and then placed an invisible sculpture made of nothing on top of it. And 10 years later, it also sold for around $20,000. I'm not proud to say this, but in my first job, my annual salary was about that much. <laughs> To be honest, you know, when I was thinking about this new work by Garao and the way it was received by many in the art world, it just immediately came to mind, this Portuguese or Spanish folk story. And the story goes more or less like this. So, once upon a time, there was a king that spent all his time, all his energy, all his attention and money on clothes. He obviously couldn't care less about the people, you know. So one day, two tricksters came into the court and promised to the king that they would give him the most gorgeous, the most incredible garments, dresses, clothes that he could imagine. And even better, these clothes would be completely invisible to anyone who was either stupid or incompetent at their jobs. And so the king thought that was the most amazing idea and hired them and they start mind-dressing the king in these immaterial clothes and obviously no one could see anything because they're made out of nothing. But who would actually confess that they were stupid or incompetent and so no one said anything and the king walked proudly naked until finally a child said, the king has no clothes. <laughs> and so the question here really is this, are you stupid enough to understand the value of immaterial art or are you the kind of stupid that's ready to admit that the king is naked? See you in the next one.